been asked by Animal to see each other again. We see each other a little bit of me and Steve, but we used to race together for Animal on a downhill team. We had some pretty glorious years doing it. What I'd like to think was the heyday of downhill, but... Yeah, I used to stay on the bike, he used to be off the bike more than I. <laughs> what, in the pub? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we had a really good time and it was nice for Animal this 30th anniversary to uh, remember us. I don't know, I reckon it's probably around 94, 95 maybe. Could be a little bit earlier, but... Yeah, it's around there, isn't it? It's going to be... I think you've fun. been, you guys, because they we locally raced as BMX races, and then you guys started doing some racing, hmm. maybe the year previously, I don't know, or something, that's what I remember, Yeah. through my brother. And then he contacted Animal about some money to fund getting a kit Basically, and yeah, just a, a race kit. Shirt and, 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 and I think and paying for entries, wasn't it? And for paying for race entries. And then we then became a team. I don't know if you were a team. I don't know, anyway. So that was, yeah, about. No, it was. About 95, giant. we reckon. No, it was on. Pre animal giant. giant spikes, like, originally. Yeah. Um, and then onto the Giants, yeah, like the 990s and stuff like that. And that developed into Animal Orange. Yeah. Mm. It took over the world. <laughs> well, maybe not. Maybe this part of the world. <laughs> God knows, probably I was just listening to loads of metal stuff really, so it's going to be like Slayer, Metallica and stuff like that really. So, not technically on the radio, but it was on my radio. Yeah. Well, I was just going to university, so I think I was a bit more indie than Steve, but I think all of what we listen to a lot of each other's music because we travel around in a big motor home and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. I remember Steve's music being a lot heavier than I was used to. As in, not us, you mean? Or well, you were what cool, people? obviously. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, animal stuff. Yeah. Wearing big t shirts, weren't yeah. they? Massive t shirts. Back then, they used to be a lot wider than the I Now t shirts, I remember. Super baggy jeans. Yeah, yeah. baggy jeans, yeah. yeah cool. Andy Bostock always used to have his. Um, the tongue used to come up in front of his jeans, I'll always remember yeah. that. Yeah, Sorry, Andy, but I remember that. Totally make out of him bad, Yeah. Oh, we had a lot of long hair as well, didn't we? Yeah. We all had long, quite a sort of long hair, which I think with the mountain biking was a bit weirder. Yeah. But yeah, we all had quite long hair. Too many ponytails in our team. Yeah. Yeah, but I rode missile so I pretty much used to dare jumping all the time. The orange uh, missile. Orange missile, yeah. yeah. Cool bike, yeah, I love that. I think I too I remember the giant when we were a giant, Andy Pope, one of the other team riders, Guzzy as he's known, he was an engineer at the time and I think the bikes had like two inches of suspension, which was at the time was, you know, like a good amount. And he developed some extra plates which gave us like three inches or something because that was pretty cool and it made us gave us a bit of a step ahead of the local competition and yeah and then orange patriot was i think that was a great you know some of the bikes we did because we helped develop those bikes with orange single pivot and those bikes are still going now so that's pretty cool that yeah. some of the bikes we helped you know you know great to see you know, obviously it progressed a bit but it's still very similar to the things we were racing so This watch, got a nice new watch at the moment, that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> we had loads, we had, I think one of the things we had through Animal especially was our kits, like we yeah, had pretty nice. cool kits. When we started, everyone was in Lycra. We brought in like more of a kind of baggy motor, well, we motor was, short, but that yeah. kind of. Like, all the kits were pretty distinctive, like over everyone else's really. Mm. Um, I mean, I see a thing on Facebook the other day, like someone tagged me in, in like with the iconic race shirt, with the boost. Capri's Boost logo yeah, and all that. I've seen that. Yeah. I've seen it all. It really stands out. Like it's just a good kit, you know. So that was really nice. That because we had someone cool like Animal, we were we were getting kit that was a bit more distinctive. I think than most of it, and had a bit of a different angle to it. So yeah, yeah, yeah that was that was a nice idea. There's too many of them to be fair. Mm. You can't really um, just knock one on, on the head, but any trip to the World Cups really. Yeah. They're yeah, all really good, amazing. Just sort of hang out with everyone and see all the guys that ride in Europe and America and stuff. It's just, yeah, it's just good, good times. Yeah, it was always a nice dynamic because because you're racing downhill against the clock. It wasn't there was none of that real personal conflict that you might get in other yeah. sports. So everybody got on with everybody. Mm -hmm. So we all had a laugh, and also it was quite nice back then. I don't know if they still do it now. 
we'd all go out and get drunk afterwards. Mm-hmm. So you you know you'd finish the event, <laughs> and then everybody would party a bit. And yeah. there was this real. I, I assume they probably still do it. It was after the event. You know, you did the right time. It's changed a bit now. Well, maybe yeah. But that, <laughs> I, mean, I think we were in a good party because as long as everyone's doing it, it's fine, isn't it? You know, yeah. as long as everyone's doing it, and there was a really nice. Everybody got together, and you know, it was it was, it was a good time. Other than Steve, um, well, first of all, I'll say my brother. Can I say first of all because he's 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 actually you know he was he sort of not started it but he was sort of brains behind getting the money together. So that was pretty cool. But I think Tim Ponting was always a, a great fun person to ride with from a race side of things, wasn't he? Because for me personally, as a racer, he was in, really inspirational and he was just on getting it. on with it and just making it look easy and yeah. the opposite of what I did basically. He made it look easy and. Just flew down and always with a big grin on his face. Always a really nice guy. So yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd obviously say Robin, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, other than Robin, um, probably yeah, Greg. Just because what he's done in the sport, like amazing on a bike, and like back then he was just the same. Like it just it, me and him would just try and find stuff to jump and see if we could jump it first. Or really got a good start with jumping, and um, especially doing like styles and stuff. Pretty good tricks. I like to copy his tricks most of the time. <laughs> he was, yeah, he was cool. Really, Pretty amazing really that he lived down. in Paul, wasn't it? And, yeah. Yeah, and you especially rode with him yeah, loads, you know, that with, um, lived down here Kev for James. a bit. Yeah. You, must, yeah, you must have had a big impact on his development, Steve. Uh, I don't know about that. He reckons I taught him knack-knacks, but I think that's some of the copies. I don't think I've ever done that. But, uh, yeah. He was obviously better than me. So. Yeah. No, he was cool. He was probably one of, the, one of the best teammates for sure. And for what he's done, the sport and like where he is now still in the sport it's yeah he's had an amazing career really to be honest yeah. he doesn't seem to have changed that much does he he's still no, the sort no, of nice person you know yeah. but he doesn't seem to have changed well around, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tina, it's a long time ago to remember <laughs> probably is yeah <laughs> uh, my brother again I'm going to say my brother because my brother so um, yeah yeah you know what's a boss is your brother, so I'll say my brother. I can say him, because <laughs> he's sleep talking, it's amazing. <laughs> he's come out with some right rubbish, didn't he? Probably, probably. I was asleep, I don't The know. best one, I can technically say this is the best one. I don't know where we were, but obviously it was pretty late, and anyway, everyone's asleep. And then all of a sudden, I, I must have been awake for some reason, I don't know. But he just sits bolt upright and goes, check out my dining area. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> and then just went back to sleep again. Like, the thing that you remember that, 100%. <laughs> well, that's a good memory to have, isn't it? I don't remember. So, yeah, I didn't know what he was on about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah there could be worse things than that, so I'll yeah. accept that. Yeah, there's a lot worse than not saying, so it's fine. <laughs> well, it's pleasant then, to be fair. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, open doors for other sort of sponsors at the time that people sort of moved on to or went back to Animal and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, open doors. As soon as you're sponsored by, say, like Animal, um, people tend to look at you a bit more, and you know, people will come to you and ask you yeah. for more of this, more of that. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, open quite a few doors. Cool. Sure. I mean, led, led to some great sponsors when we were riding there. You know, Cadbury's we mentioned earlier. We were sponsored by PlayStation. Yeah. And all sorts of, you know, and obviously some amazing bike brands, but I think that obviously that connection with Animal brought that out. Obviously, Bunny Hop World Champion. <laughs> obviously. Um, yeah, that's, that's sort of up there. Is that the one that happened at the shed at the... Malvins and the bike shed? At the bike shed, oh, and Malvins, yeah, yeah. Just... It seems like a bit of a joke looking back on it, but at the time it was bloody good. Wasn't it? Yeah. It was, and people loved it. You know, the big crowds around it, and uh, yeah. and I could do it just watching. But um, yeah, it was. That yeah, was just, it was pretty good. Any time you got a good result, really, it's just memorable. Like, yeah. especially the racing back then, there were so many people that were actually good. <laughs> like, it's hard to get like the elite class back then it was pretty stacked. Really, I was like mm. Pete Warner, you got, like Rich Warner, obviously Robin. There's so many people, yeah. isn't there? Like, you know, if you get top ten, that was a pretty good result, really. Yeah. But, you know, it was always Pete Warner, a few other guys, wasn't it? Like, sort of up there, but... Ponting. Yeah, Ponting. Yeah. <laughs> I think my best, my, my 
best moment, well, my most memorable moment was, was a World Cup where I qualified, <laughs> I qualified fifth at, Cap- at Caprun, which, you know, within our team was really, you know, that's yeah. the high, I think it's the best anyone had ever done at that point. It was only qualifying. Tim was maybe getting in the, was getting in the top 20s, but, so it was like quite a lot of excitement around it. And it was at a time when it was live on Eurosport as well. Mm-hmm. So that's obviously great for the team, you know, that, you know, potential load of coverage and all that. And then sat at the top, so I was fifth to last one down. All the other teams around that level, they had the easy ups. It started raining. Um, I was there with an umbrella over, held over my head by the mechanic. Anyway, so it started raining. So he, we changed the wheels over, but he hadn't realised he had dry tyres on the other set of wheels. He hadn't put wet tyres on it. So that one, anyway, I basically hit the camera on the second corner or the camera point, and I never once made it any onto any of the TV screens. So all the Brits were at the bottom watching it on the big screen, you know, waiting for it to come. And, Martin Ashton always tells me a story, and I never once made any of the camera points. Yeah, so, uh, Each camera point flashed, there was no one there. Yes, no one ever there, so just went to an advert or something. So yeah, that's that's probably my most memorable failure, but it was, yeah. <coughs> it was still good the first bit. Quali- shoot, good to qualify well, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, that, but that really sticks in my memory, and it's yeah. kind of funny because of it, because if I had stayed on, I'd have probably come by 25th or something, and then it would have meant nothing, so yeah. <laughs> Sort of in the well, in the general whole mountain bike sort of side of things, it's pretty iconic really because the team was like based around that brand, so it was you know it's pretty big back then really. So yeah, it's yeah. just just cool to be on that was a team to sort of yeah. be on really, wasn't it? We that. certainly thought that, but I think that's what you get. We get told, don't you? People say about us being a you know being a really good team to be part of. Yeah. And then it led on to people like the Athertons. You know, they did a good stint. They sort of crossed over as we were sort of finishing. They. They took on the mantle, and you know, obviously, it's, they're still doing amazingly well now. So, um. do we get any freebies? You want freebies? You want some more animal stuff? We used to get given loads. Yeah. <laughs> he only bought me a watch and a t-shirt. Oh. Oh. I didn't believe that. Well, I can get anything. <laughs>